here is why you keep getting played by guys who pretend to be your friend but actually are really not your friend and how to avoid getting played in the future ultimately they're the garbage but it's in your best interest to learn how to distinguish the good from the bad the true intentions from the fake ones but you need to realize that when a man comes to you with the intention of dating you and you reject him or he doesn't get what he wants and he still sticks around his intentions are probably not going to be the best. 99% of the time, he's not being your true friend. He's just trying to get through the back door and potentially have something with you. Today's topic is men who pretend to be your friend, but in reality, they just want to get into your pants. I'm sure that most women have a story of a guy friend who she thought was her friend until she discovered his true intentions. Share your story in the comments below. Let's check out the rest of today's video. At this point, it becomes the thrill of the chase. And while you're finding comfort in his presence, beginning to trust somebody thinking that he has zero sexual intention towards you, the cruel irony is that he's preying on those feelings that he's creating in you, on that bonding effect, to get exactly that in bed with you. Believe me when I'm telling you, he probably has no intention to commit to you. For him at this point, it's the thrill of the chase and winning you over. It's truly not you, it's him. But it's up to you to set up your boundaries you need to have those unshakable boundaries in place to avoid getting played because a real man let me tell you a real man will never stick around if you've rejected him previously a real man with true intentions with wanting you in his life will never ever just be your friend and stick around in the friend zone he will state his intentions clearly and he would walk away if you're not a great fit at this time don't waste your time on people with vile intentions and don't give those empty hollow people a chance to be part of your life and to have access to your energy so i hope you heal soon stay wise my loves one of my brothers told me this when i was younger most men who claim to be your friend would take the opportunity to sleep with you if they could if they saw a clear opening where they could take themselves out of the friend zone my guy friend had a crush on me while i was with my ex i was dating my ex for around two years just shy of two years and during this time my guy friend um had expressed to me that he had feelings for me and you know would at some point like to pursue that and definitely did let me know about his feelings for me um for some months later my ex and i ultimately break up and a month after i see my friend for the first time in a long time we hadn't really talked for a while and um, we caught up told him about my relationship's ultimate demise and we just caught up from there his and i's relationship progressed but nothing too crazy did not go anywhere kind of far but it definitely did progress and this time i had mentioned that i had liked flowers to him just a little preface my friend had mentioned that he had feelings for me for a very long time and he's been interested in me and would love to pursue something this is what he had told me with his mouth and this is what he had expressed to me on more than one occasion he came over on my birthday after i had my birthday dinner it was really late it was extremely late he actually dropped me off because i was a little bit drunk after the club so he dropped me off that was that was its own thing um and then yeah I had mentioned to him that I really like flowers, a little disappointed that he didn't even have flowers for me on my birthday, but you know, it was really late. I was really drunk and I just really needed to be dropped off at home. So that was its, that was its own thing. Um, but yeah, the second time he came over, I mentioned to him that I really like flowers and I told him after that, he said, noted, he said he would have picked up flowers, but um, the flower shops near him were closed, whatever, whatever, that was that. Okay, that's fine. The third time he came over, he actually came over to help me put these paintings up and to help me fix my side table. So um, he brought a Magnum, like the Magnum bars, but not actually Magnums. I think they were Van Leeuwen's, um, the ice cream bars or whatever. So he brought those over, but he didn't bring flowers. And I said that was fine, but I still made a passing comment like, you know, I really like flowers and stuff like that. He said he would bring me flowers. Um, the next time he was supposed to come over, um, he made a very, very disrespectful comment to me. So I was like, this friendship is over. I don't really want to speak to you ever again. Um, let that be that. Hung up the phone. That was that. The next day, it's around 11 p.m. He gives me a call. 
and my phone is on DND after 9.15, so he was calling up my phone enough to wake me up, and I go to bed really early. He gives me a call at a little past 11, saying if he could come over, that he had something to give me, that he really wanted to talk. I said, okay, that's fine, you can come over. He comes over shortly after. I told him the door is open, so because I wasn't getting out of bed to open the door for him. He comes into my room. He has something behind his back, and he's giving the preface of his apology, saying that this was really sentimental, and he wanted to give this to me. Dear reader, what did you think he had behind his back? Did you think he had flowers? Because if you did, you would be wrong. Or partially correct, however you see fit. Um, behind his back, he had a singular flower, one singular flower um, that was in a vase, but this flower was not real, it was plastic. The flower was made out of pipe cleaners, a palm pom ball, and some wires that were made in an art class that he had taken with some friends. He said that this was very sentimental because he had handmade it and he had thought about me. In the moment, I saw the flower and I laughed and I thought it was really cute because like lol but at the same time i would have been fine with flowers i really like flowers everybody i date knows i like flowers my friends know i like flowers on any occasion i always bring flowers to the event and i always give my friends and family flowers because you know it's always good to give people their flowers while they're here so i really adore flowers okay the next time he comes over he also does not bring flowers and at that point i started thinking to myself is it me what is what is the reason why he cannot pick up flowers? I even mentioned to him, like, you know, you can like pick up four ninety nine flowers, like from Trader Joe's. Also, dear reader, to get to my apartment from the subway, you have to walk past a Target and a Trader Joe's. They're in the same building, but you pass it to get to my apartment, right? So you have to pass them to get to my apartment. I mentioned that I had bought roses the previous week. They were literally dead. But I bought them from Trader Joe's. They were the prettiest pink flowers I had. And you literally could pick up $4.99 flowers from Trader Joe's for me. Um, he kind of rolls his eyes like, yeah, 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 whatever. He comes again for the final time because this was the last time I saw him. And he also does not bring flowers. And at this time, we had recently just learned of really terrible news that had happened to some people that we know. It was really terrible. I had spoken to him the the day of and i had been very emotional about everything that was going on and just really really sad affected my friends affected my family affected a lot of people just a genuine tragedy and he came over and he still did not bring flowers obviously this affected him too whatever like what happened had affected him but i would have just thought he would have thought to bring flowers just to cheer me up because you did want to come over no i did not receive flowers um and we finally had a conversation a couple days ago and i let him know that i would no longer be in contact with him because this was not benefiting me in any way i didn't appreciate this friendship anymore this relationship and i was being used and he truly did not care for me nor like me because if he did he would have listened to me a couple of times and he would have heard me as i was speaking to him on facetime talking about my feelings i was also getting ready to go for a party so i was applying makeup as i'm speaking to him he's playing a video game and as i'm done speaking he asked me if i'm done speaking he says i say yes he says well i should give him three minutes let him finish his game you know what i was really pissed off but i said okay i will give you those three minutes um three five minutes actually passed by i'm like three minutes are up he was like well the game is not done so you're gonna have to give me two more minutes and that is, ladies and gentlemen, where the friendship, relationship, whatever the hell that was, ended then and there because I was just sick and tired. Now, the two days after, my friend who came into town from Atlanta, he was throwing a Valentine's Day party. It was really cool, really fun. On the Friday of his party, we spoke on the phone and I had told him, you know, um, he said he would love to get brunch with me. We could go out and eat, do dinner, do something. So I told him, if we are doing something, you better bring me some flowers because I really like flowers and, um, you know, you better bring me flowers or I'm going to be really mad, blah, 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 blah. That Friday, I saw him later that night. It was really fun. It was really cool. And that was kind of like just it. And then we planned to see each other on Sunday. Sunday comes, I had totally forgotten that I had, 
asked him for these flowers. It never even crossed my mind. I get to brunch after church where he said I should meet him up at. I get there. He's not there on time. I'm really pissed off and I'm waiting on him. He FaceTimes me. He's, he's like kind of sweating, saying he's on the way and he has something to give me. So I'm sitting down using my phone and then I see him when I look up. And ladies and gentlemen, he brings me these. Again, I want you to look at these bouquet. That's the, the bouquet. I begin to start crying and he's like calming me down. Like, you know, they're just flowers. And I explained to him that I finally felt heard. I finally felt seen after a very long time. Dealing with Mr. No Flowers, at a certain point, it started affecting my self-esteem. And it's not something that was active. I was actively feeling, but it was I was taking it in mentally that someone's not listening to me he's not hearing me and he clearly doesn't want to give me flowers even though he knows that it would make me very happy i mentioned this once to my friend we have a very interesting relationship as well i mentioned it once to him and he brings this bouquet not only does he bring this bouquet he had the florist specially make this bouquet because he didn't want to just bring any ordinary pink or red roses and she made this bouquet for me because she knew i'd like it again please look at the presentation of these flowers they did not just come in a plastic bag with that being said i just have a few things to say one i'm an eldest daughter and as an eldest daughter if you're an eldest daughter watching this do not date the youngest son do not talk to someone who is the youngest in his family it will never work and they will take advantage of your energy and your labor. Mr. No Flowers, young son in his family. Mr. Flowers is the oldest in his family, the oldest son and the oldest child, period. Oldest sons typically are more of providers and they do listen a lot more than the youngest do. So keep that in mind. Two, um, a man, what one man won't do, another man will do. They are easily replaceable and, you know, it's not a reflection of you. And three, to my last point. Him not getting me flowers is not a reflection of me. It's more of a reflection of him and how he saw me or his value. Whatever that was, that really wasn't any of my concern. But someone who sees you for you will treat you the way you deserve, way you deserve to, even if it's a little thing. So that's just my takeaway for today. So I have a couple things to say about this video. Number one, Mr. No Flowers waited for her to get out of her relationship before proceeding to wasting her time he knew he had no intentions of doing right by this woman but he continued to pursue her anyway because i guess he just wanted to feel like he conquered her men who do this are really sick and twisted and i would bet that he saw her ex and just wanted to feel like he was better than her ex and that he could get her too he waited and played the long game so the length of time that a man pursues you does not necessarily mean that he has good intentions now there are some times when a man could be genuine and could mean you well but i wouldn't consider that to be the norm i bet you if you call your male friends and tell them that you have feelings for them in most cases they would say they feel the same number two he wanted to humble her by not giving her flowers this isn't one of those cases where the woman is being vague and expects the man to read her mind she communicated clearly what her expectations were and he also made it clear that she did not deserve a five dollar bouquet of flowers he wanted to condition her into accepting less than what she thought she deserved and i'm really happy that she came to her senses and didn't give in and made herself feel small to boost this man's ego and number three i don't think that she should have cried in front of the new man when she got the flowers i understand being overwhelmed with emotions but if that new man also means her no well he just got the feeling that maybe she isn't used to being treated well and so all he needs to do is give her the bare minimum or just above the bare minimum and he'll have her wrapped around his fingers because she will feel like he's going above and beyond props to him for listening to her but flowers to her should be the bare minimum never let a man know that you were not treated well by your exes chances are he will use that information to his advantage or worse he will do the same thing to you if you want a man to take initiative instead of saying 
I've always planned every date with my ex. Start saying, I expect most dates to be planned by my partner. That sets your expectation without giving him too much information. In this next clip, you'll hear from a man who is talking about this very same thing. This is how guys pretend they want to be your friend when they actually just want to get with you. This is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how guys friendship their way into your pants so you can stop it from happening. Step number one, he's going to pretend like he actually genuinely cares about the guy you're talking about, right? There's either going to be a guy you like, a guy you're dating, a guy you're seeing, a guy you're spending a lot of time with. He's going to have conversation with you about this guy to make himself seem very harmless because the thought process is if he wanted you, why would he be talking to you about another man? he'd be trying to get his own one up for himself. Step number two, he explores your sexual desires and needs overall through this other guy that you're with. So he's gonna ask you a lot of sexual questions or desires, questions like that, but he's gonna express them through the funnel of this other guy, right? So he's not gonna be like, yo, you know, you know, do you like getting choked? He's gonna say, oh, like, does your man choke you? Do you enjoy that? It's never going to start off too crazy, right? But slowly but surely, the conversations will get more and more sexual and escalate further and further. He's not interested in knowing what you do with this other guy. What he's interested in is connecting himself to sex in your mind. Number three, he's slowly but surely going to isolate you. And while he's isolating you in conversation and hangouts and whatever, he's going to see how far he can push the boundaries without you stopping him. What do I mean by that? He might start off by saying things like, oh, let's go hang out with a group of friends, right? S something very harmless. Then it might go from, oh, I don't want to hang out with a group of friends today. Let's just go get some ice cream. Just mean, and it'll go from, oh, let's just go get some ice cream to, oh, you want to go get something to eat? Like, we'll just sit down, and grab some lunch or something. And let's go grab lunch to, hey, let's go chill in the car. You want to go for a drive late at night? And all of a sudden, late at night in the car, going for a drive, conversations get a little bit more intimate, get a little bit more sexual, get a little bit more provocative. All of a sudden, he's no longer talking about this other guy and you. Now the conversations are becoming, yo, like, what if we was dating? Oh, like, what if we were together? Ha ha ha, that'd be so crazy, right? Let's continue the conversation in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.